victory for Jean Viev Jean Saw. This week, bumps in the road. Is Canada's Geneviève Janson on the way to achievement or disappointment? I don't really think about that. I just don't care. I just hope that she has the people to support her when things aren't going so great. And tackled for a loss. Like I never really blamed myself for it, so I didn't feel responsible. I just sat down, said a prayer for him. Hope that, you know, he's up there watching over us all. A devastating hit put the career of this Canadian running back in the balance. Hi there, I'm Tom Harrington. Welcome once again to Sports Journal. Athletes say life on the road is tough, but for Geneviève Janson, the road is her life. Janson is a gifted cyclist. Insiders say she could become the greatest female rider of all time, but they wonder about Janson's durability and her coach's controversial training methods. Bob Babinski has that story. Superstition Mountain, outside of Phoenix, Arizona. A bike ride here is as unforgiving as the barren landscape. It's a long way from where Montreal's Geneviève Janson first learned to ride. This is pretty much home these days. It's where she lives through the winter and spring. And as long as she's on her bicycle, Janson couldn't be happier. Just the feeling you get after a hard training. Maybe I will get uh, later on in life the same feeling for another thing, but right now, 20 years old, my time is, I, it's time to cycle. Four hour rides are typical. She trains six days a week, just about year round. Her program is considered one of the heaviest on the women's tour. Everything she does is geared toward one goal. Just being world champion, maybe the title, world champion. Janson is considered a climber, figuratively and literally. Her power and determination make her almost unstoppable on hills and mountain roads. In her first three seasons as a professional road racer, Janssens won two World Cup races and the prestigious Tour de Snowy, Australia's shorter version of the Tour de France. Her coach is André Aubu, who discovered Janssens as a 14-year-old. He's always been struck by what he calls her unparalleled tenacity and fearlessness. You have to be like that. Is it going to hurt? Am I going to be out of breath? Am I doing this for nothing? Um, fear, uh, you know, without fear means also you have confidence that you can succeed. Obu designed the training program that brought Janssen to the World Junior Championships in 1999. That's where she became the only Canadian ever to win two gold medals. But Obu had never coached cycling prior to hooking up with Janssen in 1995. He was once a national canoe champion and is a high school phys ed teacher. His coaching methods caused a stir in cycling's inner circles. People believe in stuff and very traditional and you know, it's one way to do something. And I wasn't seeing it the same way as they were. After a while, they say, well, uh, I, I felt that people saying, well, he's got his way to do things. I am not necessarily agree, but it seems to work uh, with Geneviève. Ian Austin is a freelance writer in Ottawa who's covered cycling for 15 years. What he's lacking is the sort of science background that, that modern trainers have. I mean, they're often physicians or they're people with graduate PhD degrees in kinesiology, physiology, things like that. Um, people who you know, have a really grounded scientific understanding of the, of the human body and, and how it works. Scientific or not, Obu has tailored a program specifically for Janssen which means she spent many hours on her own the last few years, whether it's getting the groceries or training. In her first season as a pro in 2000, she rode without a team. Obu preferred to build her individual talent rather than watch her become a support rider for more established cyclists on a high-profile team. Together, they made it clear they do things their own way. The set and Jean-Saint 
usually wheel to wheel in this pack and about eighth to tenth position. So they're in good position as they head into the final few kilometers. Then at the 2000 Sydney Olympics, their independent style caused some conflict with Canadian cycling team officials. Jean-Saul finished 11th in the road race, and Obu criticized the way Canadian coaches used his protégé. Now one of the riders takes off. That looked like Lynn Bessette. But Bessette criticized Jean-Saul, saying she didn't stick with the strategy the Canadian team planned for the crucial late stage of the race. There were clearly sort of two camps there, and I think it played out in the race. It didn't appear that she and Lynn Bessette were riding on the same team at times. And it wasn't a very cohesive effort, and uh, you know, I think we saw what that brought about in the final result. I didn't see where the Canadians finished in that, but they didn't seem to be a factor at all in that sprint. Yet another example of the differences in coaching style. That Olympic race solidified the perception of Jean Saint as an outsider, but she makes no apologies for the path she's taking. I don't really think about that. I just don't care. So uh, I'm the way I am and like I told you before, I made a choice and I accept everything that comes with it. The experience in Sydney was a reminder Jean-Saul needed teammates to win world-class road races. That's why Obu built a team around her after the Olympics. The Rona team started competing on the women's tour in 2001. Jean-Saul has created superstar status for herself here in Quebec. Soon after, Jean-Saul won the 2001 World Cup race in Montreal by a wide margin. But shortly after winning this race, she developed painful tendonitis in her knee. Jean-Saul believes it's because new pedals she was using locked her feet in at an awkward angle. Because of the injury, she decided to pull out of the 2001 World Championships. That injury uh, taught me that I'm not in, made of steel. I have to take care of myself more. Um, it's making me stronger. But some blame Jean-Saul's injury on Obu's heavy training methods. Indeed, many cyclists and coaches are saying privately that they fear this rising star will burn out before long. Well, the challenge is, is designing a really skillful training program that, that, you know, of, that avoids those issues of burnout, that really monitors her, her progress well. Jean-Saul was healthy in June of 2002 when she returned to Montreal for the World Cup race. In fact, she had been racing well and without injury for five months. Now she was going to test her strength against some of the top riders from Europe. Before racing, the riders gathered at this news conference, and Jean-Saul was the focus of a lot of attention. Cathy Marsal could relate to Jean-Saul. Marsal is a 31-year-old rider from France who was a world senior champion when she was just 19. She had a lot of trouble managing that early success. She hopes Jean-Saul doesn't make the same mistakes she did never accepting when people were giving me some advice like take care you're doing this mistake take care you're doing this mistake i was like no way I'm, I'm i'm right don't worry i know what i'm doing until the moment you you thought you know four years after you make this mistake and you're like god they were right you know and then it's too late and the riders have moved up to the start line there's nicole friedman from the not all the top europeans were at the start line in montreal but many were Jean Viev, one of those riders that likes to sort This of was one of the toughest races of the season for Jean Saint. From the start, Jean Saint and her Rona teammates were at or near the front of the lead group, or Peloton. With a lap to go, Jean Saint was still right there. But two veteran riders made a break on either side. Jean Saint was caught off guard and could only watch. It looks like Jean Saint will finish in third place. Her last climb was no longer about racing for first place, just a place on the podium. Jean-Saul finished third. So she had to salvage all she could, and she did a great job in doing that. Two days later, most of the riders were still in Montreal, but had crossed town from Mount Royal to the Lachine Canal. This was a time trial, an individual race against the clock. As Jean-Saul started, she was expected to show off her raw power. Her critics say she needs to develop better strategy in road races to become a more complete rider, but they don't dispute how good she is in this event. There are no tactics in the time trial, just all-out speed, and Jean-Saul didn't disappoint. She won the race by one second, beating some of the most powerful riders in the world, including fellow Canadian Clara Hughes.
Hughes first competed against Jean Sa at the qualifying race for the Sydney Olympics. The double bronze medalist from the 1996 Games compares Jean Sa to the legendary French rider Jeannie Longo. It's going to be interesting to watch her progress because I think she's probably done more training than most people, athletes do in their whole lifetime and she's only 19 or 20 years old. You go through ups and you go through downs and I just hope that she has the people to support her when things aren't going so great. If her goal is to be world time trial champion every year, well, you know, she probably has a really good chance using the method she's using now, provided she doesn't burn out, provided she doesn't get injured. Uh, if she wants to have success at major stage races like uh, Le Grand Boucle, the, the Women's Tour de France, um, well, you know, she's going to have to become a sort of more skillful team player, I think. The two days in her hometown in June were well spent for Geneviève Janson, a win in Lachine, a third on Mount Royal. But later in the summer, Janson took close to a month off after developing tendonitis in her other knee. She missed the Commonwealth Games in England, but came back in time to win the time trial at the Canadian Championships. As for those who say she's risking her career by working so hard, she had this parting shot after the Lachine race. What's too hard? You cannot say that somebody is working too hard because you're, you're a different person. I just do the things I, I like and the things that works for me. And uh, I like what I'm doing and when I'll be tired or when I won't have any more fun, I will quit. But right now, I mean, I'm just living to bike. Jean Saint was a heavy favorite to win the road race at the World Cycling Championships in Belgium in October, but she withdrew because of an injury earlier in the competition. Time now for a break. When Sports Journal returns, we'll have this story. <laughs>